I want to thank everyone um, today for joining us. Uh, my name is uh, Maureen Fitzpatrick, and I'm a human resources business partner at Lowell General Hospital and also a member of the Mass Hire uh, Greater Lowell Workforce Development Board. So today we're joined by a number of um, HR industry experts. So these are the, um, we have a panel of industry experts who are responsible for hiring in many companies in the area. And this is an opportunity for you to hear directly from those hiring managers to share tools and guidance um, to position you as the best candidate um, for any position, and then also to help you really confidently and navigate, uh, confidently navigate um, the job search process. So as many of you know, over the past year, um, the job search and hiring process has really changed. It's gone to more of a remote um, Zoom interview uh, online application. So um, that one-on-one -on -one contact is, has changed a little bit in that respect. So we want to make sure that we're able to prepare you to um, really make yourself stand out as a candidate. So what is actually, so what is uh, the first step in the hiring process? And that is really the application process. And why is that so important? It's, um, it is important because it helps you stand out um, to your employer. It's really the, to a potential employer. It's really your first opportunity um, to stand out. And so completing an, an application correctly and thoroughly shows um, that you as a candidate have attention to detail and it also shows your ability to, um, to follow directions. So you do wanna make sure before you um, start the application that you um, actually read the, read the application thoroughly, complete everything as I said, um, complete it um, accurately, neatly, be prepared to um, provide employment dates, um, the date of um, the dates of employment, your position, the name of your hiring manager, any any uh, contact information. Um, be truthful, so you don't want to over exaggerate anything or be inaccurate because that can certainly um, hurt your chances as a candidate um, if you're not hired or possibly to be hired with that company. Uh, if there were any less than kind of favorable um, experiences as an employer really try to minimize that negative information and just keep it clear and concise. Um, you, um, there's no need to really go into a lot of negative details. You know, again, always keeping in mind that um, you do want to be truthful, but just keep it clear and concise. And then also in terms of the position itself, um, indicate the position that you're applying for, the number of hours, um, the shifts that you're available. And this is really important because you just, um, as a candidate, want to make sure that you you are um, realistic in terms of um, the, the shifts that you're available for. You don't want to say that you're available on weekends if that isn't the case. So it is important to make sure that um, that information is accurate. Um, also be prepared to upload a resume because uh, some applications would require a resume. So just be prepared with that. And then also references. Um, it is very important just to make sure that you contact your references in advance, um, get the best email and phone number for them to use as a contact and be able to provide um, that information. Then the next step in the hiring process is really the interview process. And this, this is probably the most nerve wracking for a candidate and also um, it is one of the most important steps in the hiring process. So preparation is really key. This is your opportunity to, um, you have a very short window of time to position yourself to show this employer that you are the right candidate for the position. So um, you wanna make sure that you make the lasting impression and that hiring manager walks away knowing who you are, what you have to offer the company and why you're interested in that particular position. So preparation again is key. Make sure that you're prepared to um, answer really typical um, interview questions. Questions such as tell me about yourself and be prepared to, um, to, to share with the interviewer two of your strengths because um, you can do that in a confident way. It doesn't have to be bragging, but just make sure that um, you're able to share um, at least two of your strengths and it shows confidence, it shows um, self-awareness, um, and then also uh, be prepared to answer questions such as, uh, why should we hire you? Um, what do you, um, why do you want to work uh, with our company? 
tell me a little bit about um, an experience that was a negative experience and how did you deal with that and what did you learn from that? And just be prepared to share those kind of situations that, that you encountered so that you can answer those types of questions. Interviewers are really trying to get to know you as a candidate and a question like that would tell them how you operate um, in stressful situations, what your communication style is, um, are you a team player? Um, and again, um, with all this information, you want to be—you um, do want to be yourself. You want to be truthful. Um, you want to be authentic. You don't want to um, position yourself or portray yourself as someone who, uh, which um, you know, isn't really um, truthful. And you also don't want to overshare as a candidate. So there's no need to um, share a lot of information that um, is a little bit too personal and not really relevant to the position. Um, and then be prepared to ask your own questions. And that shows the interviewer that you as the candidate are, you're interested in the position, you're interested um, in the company. Um, remember to smile, remember to breathe, um, you know, really just make that a conversation. And, and at the end of the interview, you wanna make sure that that hiring manager understands you as a candidate, that you've made a lasting impression and that they can remember at the end of the interview, why you are the best um, candidate for the position. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Caitlin. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you everyone for joining today. I am really happy to be here. Um, let me take a minute just to introduce myself. My name's Caitlin Sweat. I am part of the HR team here at Lowell Five Bank. I've been in HR for about 14 years now, and I'm really here to provide you with some helpful tips for the actual interview. Um, as Maureen said, whether that is Zoom interview or in person, um, hopefully we can provide you with some helpful tips after the application process. In some cases, you may have already had a phone screen, um, but now it's kind of the visual part of the interview for you to make an impression. Um, so this is a good opportunity for you. And the best thing I can say is before you even get there is to prepare a little bit. Do your homework, um, know about the position you are applying for and what intrigues you about the position and what you may find challenging. Um, know what the company does. I'm always really impressed with candidates who have a little bit of knowledge about the company. And you're gonna plan a professional outfit for the interview, regardless if it's in person or Zoom. Um, we'll talk about the dress code a little bit in more detail in a bit, but that's a, the impression that you give with your outfit is important. Consider jewelry as part of that. Um, you want to keep it minimal. You want to avoid distractions as much as possible. And you, you know, certainly if it's Zoom, this won't apply. But if it's in person, you know, keep the fragrances to a minimum. Some people have sensitivities to strong perfumes or colognes, so just keep that in mind as well. You know, of course, if you're gonna be um, in person, you wanna brush your teeth, you wanna make sure you don't have anything in your mouth, no gum, nothing like that. And if you are gonna be in person, I would recommend bringing a mask with you um, just in case. And, you know, get in the right mindset. You wanna have a real positive attitude when you go into the interview so you can present yourself in the best light. So now that you've prepared a bit, the one thing I can say is please be on time. Um, that is a key piece, you know, even a few minutes early, whether it is a Zoom meeting or in person, you know, you want to be on time. This shows the employer that you are really serious about the position and that you value their time. It'll also help you to be a little more calm and relaxed during the actual interview. You don't want to feel rushed um, or get flustered in any way. I always say to individuals, you know, if you're feeling nervous about where to go or getting there on time, do a test run. Um, if that's a couple of days ahead of time, keep in mind the time of day and, and the traffic patterns. But it's, it is best to leave your friends and family behind on the day of the interview. So really, you can focus on yourself. You know, um, historically, the interview, you want to have a firm handshake. However, um, that may be a post-COVID you know, thing to keep in mind, but right now, make sure you introduce yourself when you arrive, first and last name. Interviewers see a lot of people, so don't assume they know, you know, exactly who you are. Maybe they have someone ahead of you or coming in after you, so just make sure you introduce yourself. 
you know, if you are in person and you're entering a room, take a cue from the interviewer as to where to sit. If they don't ask you, you know, ask them if they have a preference, especially if there's some social distancing going on. Please don't have your cell phone near you. Um, this is not a time to be worrying about text or social media, you know, and turn your um, ringers off so that that's not a distraction during the interview. I would also say, you know, if you're in person, maybe have a copy of your resume handy in case they need it, or, you know, have a notebook or a pen, pad of paper with you to jot down some notes, or, you know, if you have some questions to ask the interviewer, that's, that's always something as well. During the interview, whether you're in person or on Zoom, you know, you still want to make contact, smile, um, show that you're enthusiastic about the role. As Maureen mentioned, you can ask your own questions. That helps you stay engaged with the interviewer. And just try to keep everything positive. You know, be patient, listen if you need to, and if you know you need a little time to process your thoughts or think of an example, that's okay to do that. Just take a minute. Be aware of your body language. You know, try really to sit up tall. Um, try not to talk too much with your hands, rock back and forth, things like that. So, you know, everyone may be nervous, but just try to be mindful of that. You know, be polite, be friendly. Um, when you're done, thank them for their time and in interviewing them. You know, reiterate how excited you are about the opportunity and ask about next steps in the process. Make sure you understand if you're gonna wait for them to call you or if you need to reach out to them to follow up. You know, most importantly, be yourself, be genuine. Um, that's, that's most important, be who you are. You know, I just wanna take a moment to talk a little bit about the dress code. It is really important when getting ready for an interview, even if it is on Zoom. You know, you have about five seconds to make a really good first impression. And so that's something that's really important. It shows the employer, you know, how you view yourself as a professional and how you would re represent the company as well. You know, your clothing, your hairstyle, your accessories, your makeup, all of that can either reinforce or it can really harm your professional image. You wanna try your best to look polished, put together without going over the top. Please ensure your clothes are neat, ironed. Um, you may wanna stay away from bold prints that might be distracting. You know, jeans, um, if you're in person, shorts, never appropriate leggings. Um, again, jewelry, makeup, keep it minimal. Fragrances, again, if you're in person. And I would say, you know, Different employers have different policies. You may want to consider removing any facial piercings, or body piercings, covering up any tattoos for the interview process. Um, and if you're in person, you know, consider your shoes. You don't want to show up in a professional outfit with, you know, beach sandals or flip flops on. So consider that as well. The one tip I would say is, you know, if you're questioning yourself and asking if it's appropriate, um, it's probably not if you keep going back to it. So keep that in mind and change and, um, and best of luck. Thanks. I'll turn it over to Tess. Yeah, my name is Tess Schatzer and I work for the Lowell National Historical Park. Um, I've been involved in hiring uh, youth um, from ages 16 to, to 30, really, um, for at least the last 15 years. Um, one of the things that's changed for me as a hiring official is, is the onset of social media. Um, when I first started hiring people, um, the idea of looking at someone's profile online was not necessarily something that we did um, or could do. Um, but now social media is very much a part of all of our lives. And so a few things to keep in mind that you might not realize are part of um, what social, what you're presenting to an employer is your social media. Um, so a couple of things. Um, the first thing to, that, that comes to my mind is the acronym THINK. Um, make sure that what you're posting is, is true, it's helpful, it's inspiring, it's necessary, and that it's kind. Um, and, and along those same lines, there's kind of a top 10 that you could be thinking about as you're posting. Um, whether um, one of the things to keep in mind is the idea of a golden rule. Um, what you're posting, uh, making sure that it's something that you, if you put that out there, that you would be okay if someone were to put that out there about you. Um, being kind in that sense. Um, you don't want to brag too much on on your on your social media. 
You want to avoid too much information in your in your social media posts. You want to think about the reader. If the reader's looking at your post, what are they going to see, and what do they think about you after seeing your post? Um, these aren't just for your friends anymore. Um, if you're out there in the job market, your possible employers are looking at what you're posting as well. So keeping your relationship details maybe to yourself. People don't need or want to know everything about you. Um, Along those same lines, though, you don't want to be cryptic and have that mic drop on, on, on your social media posts where you, you post something very provocative and then just leave it out there um, to encourage all kinds of comments. Um, keeping in mind that somebody's looking at everything that you're posting, um, complaining a lot. I belong to a, a group for the National Park Service. Um, it's all employees of the National Park Service. And a lot of people on that web page will go on and complain about their jobs and complain about their employers. And as a hiring official, I'm looking at that and thinking, gee, I don't want that person working for me if that's all they are going to do is complain about their work. So people are looking out there. Same thing with your photos, um, curating your photos. And by that, I mean, making sure that the picture, um, everything that you see in the picture is something that you want to present to everybody. You might see something in the background of that photograph that you didn't know when you took the photo, but now it's suddenly up there on, on the screen um, and for, uh, for all time. And that's a big thing to keep in mind, the for all time part. Um, social media posts never go away. So something that you're posting today might be there 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. So think about the digital footprint you're leaving, um, not just for your employers today as a, as a high school student, but as your employer is moving forward. Um, it, it matters um, because those cool posts that you make today um, could end up costing you a job down the road. Um, other things just to keep in mind in general, you know, avoiding any kind of vulgar offensive language, um, obviously inappropriate behavior using drugs or alcohol, um, discriminatory comments about gender, race, and religion, all of these things have no place on social media. And certainly if you're trying to put yourself out there um, to be a, a candidate for a job. Um, complaining, as I said before, things like that, lots of selfies, that sends a message to your employer or a potential employer that you might not be a team player. And I think probably every employee or every employer on this call and everyone I know is always looking for someone who's a good team player, a person who's gonna fit in and be a part of the team. So your, your online presence is good. It's a great thing to have. I've, I've found some great candidates by checking profiles and looking at people's presence on social media. It's like, wow, they have some hobbies that would really help fit in with my work group. Um, but it can work against you if, you if you don't use it in the right manner. The bottom line is always think before you post because there is almost always someone watching you. Um, and with that, I'll turn it over to Jessica. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jessica Fabiano and I am the Director of Early Talent Programs here at Thermo Fisher. So excited to talk to you about you know, professional communication and, and email. So very important part of the interview process. As you're interviewing, you may wanna send a follow-up communication to a potential employer, or you may even wanna reach out to an employer using a, a professional email. And so one of the things we like to talk about is making sure that you keep it professional, keep it simple, and make sure you're keeping your language appropriate. So as you look at an email and you think about an email, one of the things you want to consider is make sure that you're using your formal name, not nickname. So if an employer goes to search for you in their um, electronic database, if you've applied online, uh, your nickname may not pop up in there. So making sure you use your, your formal given name is always appropriate. Um, also consider creating or changing your email address just for job interviews. And so you want to make sure that your email address is something professional when you're looking for a job. So you want to make sure that it doesn't say something like cool dude at gmail.com. You know, typically what I like to tell people to do is maybe use their first and last name, maybe the school they're going to if your first and last name aren't available and have a separate email address specifically for job hunting. 
When you're writing an email to a potential employer, make sure you spell the recipient's name correctly. Some people are really sensitive to this, so you want to make sure that whoever you're directing the email to, that you have it spelled accordingly. No chatting or writing with that individual for, um, informally, so you want to make sure that what you're writing is appropriate, that you use things like greetings and thank you and sincerely as you're crafting your email. Don't use web slang or jargon. Um, make sure that you're writing gram, uh, correctly from a grammar standpoint and check your spelling. Um, spell check is your friend, I like to say. Always run spell check. And even after that, um, make sure, even if you run spell check, to read. I like What I like to do is read my email out loud. And so typically when I read my email out loud, word for word, sometimes I can catch things that way as well um, that I might not have just kind of perusing an email before I hit send. Additionally, you know, include in your subject line um, of the email why you're writing this recipient. So if it's in regards to a potential job that you're interested in, make sure to include what the name of that job is. And if there even is a job number, if you've applied online, I think including that job number as well is very helpful. And then as you go to close out that email, make sure you include um, your formal signature and if you're in school, you know, what year you're in in school at Lowell High School, I think is really appropriate. Maybe you're a graduating senior or you're a rising um, sophomore or junior, include that there and, and a contact number for them to be able to reach you. So maybe they won't respond back via email. They might actually pick up the phone call. Um, again, before you hit send, and I always love to do this, I always like to say phone a friend. So have somebody that you can take a a quick uh, picture of your email or send it to someone else first before sending it formally over to the, the, the actual intended recipient. So I have somebody on speed dial at any given time if I just need to double check myself uh, to send my email over and say, hey, would you mind taking a quick look at this and making sure that it sounds appropriate to you? So always helpful to have somebody that you can reach out to and who can double check your work. And so what do you do if you have to actually leave a phone message for an individual? So what you want to do is assume that whoever you're calling, um, assume that it's low tech. So maybe that they don't have caller ID and they don't know who's calling them. So anytime you go to leave a voicemail, you definitely want to introduce yourself with the reason why you're calling. Um, state your full name and why you're calling. Make sure that you leave a contact number for them to reach back out to you. Um, stating your telephone number very clearly. Make sure that you speak slowly and professionally. And remember that the employers will return your phone message, but you might need to give them a little bit of time to do so. It might not be instantaneously or even within the hour. So an example of that is, and, and I'll do a, a quick run through on how I like to leave a voicemail. Um, I might say, hi, my name is Jessica Fabiano. I'm calling from Lowell High School. I'm interested in your part-time sales position and would like to learn more about it. If you wouldn't mind giving me a call back, my phone number is 415 123 Six, seven. Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing from you soon. So that's an example of how I might go about leaving a voicemail for someone I'd like to call me back about a potential employment opportunity. If you do have to leave a message and you're expecting a call back, um, please try to change your voicemail to something professional. So you don't want, you know, when that employer to goes to call you back that they get a message that says something like, hey, I'm busy right now. Um, hit me back later. So you definitely want to make sure that's your voice message is something appropriate. It might be that, hi, my name is Jessica. I'm sorry I'm unavailable to take your call right now. Your message is very important to me. Please leave your name and number and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So that's just an example of a, a way um, a professional um, voicemail might be set up. And if you've missed a call, make sure you call that individual back. So I think trying to call somebody back on the same day is always appropriate. Not everybody's gonna expect to call you, have you call them back within the hour. But certainly if you can call them back the same day, that's always preferred. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is Zoom interviews. We're in a day and age right now with COVID that you may not be able to meet with somebody face-to-face. -face. And so, you know, we talked a little bit about um, Zoom interviews earlier, but we wanna give you a few more tips and tricks that might be helpful for you um, while you're on Zoom. So while you're on Zoom, you definitely wanna use the mute button whenever you're not speaking. Just in case there might be any background noises, um, you want to make sure that it's not distracting for the person and the other people that you may be talking to. So use that mute button whenever you're not talking. 
Again, while you're also on Zoom, make sure that you're looking into the camera while speaking. It's hard really a lot to create a personal connection with someone while you're on Zoom, but if you're looking directly into the camera, that does help. Um, additionally, you wanna make sure that you're picking a quiet place, something that is free from distraction. Um, you wanna silence your cell phone. So making sure that it doesn't ring or beep in the background while you're speaking. Um, I also say besides silencing your cell phone, um, don't even have it like near you. And if it is near you, turn it over so that if you're you know, getting um, notifications on your phone that it's not distracting to you and you're not encouraged to look down. So just turn it over so it's not even a consideration. So making sure that um, you look directly into the camera and speaking while you're speaking to the interviewer is very important. Find a good internet connection. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're not breaking up and that your, your broadband, if it is gonna be a video call, is sufficient enough to handle um, the conversation. Keep your screen clear. So you wanna make sure that um, you're not gonna be distracted by things that might be popping up over the top of what you're talking on. And then again, using appropriate body language. So making sure that you're leaning towards the camera, that you're kind of in a good view. The tips that I like to do is look at um, and post my resume behind my actual interview screen so that if I'm talking to someone that it looks like I'm looking directly at the camera but that I can reference my interview notes um, very easily because my resume is posted behind my computer screen on a wall. So those are just some of the tips and tricks that I have um, in regards to Zoom interviews and with that I'd like to turn it over to Carrie Lynn. My name is Carrie Lynn O'Brien. I'm the Operation ASM at TJ Maxx in Middleton, Mass. I have been here for the last 15 years and out of 14 years, have been the hiring manager for TJ Maxx at several different locations. Today, I wanna to take the opportunity to talk to you of how to keep your job. So the most important thing is be on time every day. You wanna work hard and you wanna complete all of your assignments. You wanna listen carefully to instructions and ask questions if you don't understand. And it's okay to say, can you explain that again if you don't understand the first time? You wanna keep your eyes and ears open and you wanna watch and learn. You wanna show initiative, show that you want to learn more and you want to branch out into different areas of whatever position that you have. Uh, you wanna keep a positive attitude. You wanna be willing to accept constructive criticism. We can't improve ourselves if we don't know what we are doing wrong or have anything that we need to work on. Call in sick or make arrangements in advance. Um, if you get angry, it's okay to take a time out. It's okay to ask to talk to your boss about the problem that made you angry. Don't walk off the job. Don't hit anything or anyone. Say please and thank you and excuse me. You just wanna be polite in all your interactions. You don't want to swear and you don't wanna take personal phone calls. Most employers now let you have your cell phones on you due to imminent threat situations. So you wanna be respectful of them being able to have that opportunity to have your cell phone on you. Um, and you wanna look at what your responsibilities are. Know what hours you can work. Consider school, homework, and extracurricular activities. You wanna be willing to learn. You wanna concentrate on the job that's given to you. You want to own up to all of your mistakes. You want to do quality work. You want to try to have an ad, excuse me. You want to try to have an attitude to do an extraordinary job. You want to prepare to be flexible. They may not have something in your category to do today. Well, maybe you can learn something different. And maintaining confidentiality. You want to be diplomatic. You want to be able to listen to what everybody has to say and make appropriate judgments from there. You want to be aware of what the company policies are. So it's a lot of responsibilities that everybody has when they're working. And the only way is to absorb everything that they're telling you. It's the only way to gain experience in anything that you do. Every experience that you have only makes you a better person and a better employee as you go on in life. So a little experience can go a long way. Getting some types of work experience as early as possible makes you a stronger job candidate. It shows great work ethic, and it shows that you're able to balance your home life and your work life and your extracurricular activities. So any experience that you have, whether it's mowing lawns or babysitting, it shows that you can keep your commitments. And those, um, excuse me, uh, the people that you have mowed lawns for or babysat for, 
they can attest to what type of person you are. Do you show up on time? Are you responsible and do you follow direction? And what quality of work do you have? What I want to leave everybody with is just three things. Be kind, be honest, and work hard. It will take you a long way in life and it makes you proud of your work. And it will also make your employer proud of you. And you'll never know when that promotion is around the corner. And the only way to do that is to be kind and to be honest and work hard. I appreciate the time that you've given me today and I'd like to turn it over to Tess. Thank you. Um, there are a few links. If you are a local high school student, you will see some links um, on the screen for each school that will allow you to contact um, Beatrice Sierra um, or your local school counselor. You can see there are links for Lowell High School, Drakett High School, the Greater Lowell Technical High School, and Tewksbury Memorial High School. Um, those websites and those contacts are available to you at any time. Beatrice? If you are an employer and are looking for a good workers, I can find them for you. Please contact Beatrice Sierra at 978-805-4813. 978-805-4813. Oh, my email is Beatrice.Sierra at so before we close, I'd like to just um, ask each employer to really share their final thoughts. Every job that you have is kind of the interview for the next job you want to get. That current employer is going to be a reference for the next job that you apply for. So if you conduct yourself at each job as if you're interviewing for your next one, um, you can never go wrong in terms of being able to get employment. I would just say again, you know, be on time, whether it's an interview or for your job every day, and, and just be enthusiastic. Try to learn as much as you can on the job. And I just wanted to kind of echo what Tess and Maureen were saying. So every time I'm interviewing a candidate for a role, I'm not only thinking about them for that role, but I'm also considering, do they have the ability to move into one or two levels above the role that I'm interviewing them for? So if you are interning at a company over the summer or working part-time, do you have that ability to come back as a repeat intern in the future or full-time in the future? And so always making sure that you put your best foot forward. And additionally, um, as an employer, we have just as much to learn from you as you do to learn from us. And so it really should be a partnership. And as you're going through the interview process, you know, one of the things that you want to consider is, is this the right place for you? Um, do you see yourself fitting in culturally? Is this the type of culture that you want to work within? And so also asking yourself as you're considering those potential employment opportunities, is it going to set you up for success down the road? Uh, just a little insight as to this may not be a job that you thought it was, and that's okay. It's okay to test the waters. All that employers ask is that you're respectful. If it's not for you, be honest with yourself and be honest with your employer and make sure that you're giving a sufficient amount of notice because they do need to replace you. And that just shows great potential in yourself as a respectful part of the community that, you know what, this isn't for you. And I'm going to go on to find something that is good for me. But now I can use them as a reference and they can see my character. And that goes a long way, especially when I interview. I interview a lot of, lot of teenagers and I like to see them being honest with themselves, but also seeing their potential. I've hired a lot of kids that have been promoted through the ranks because of just how they are. It's not something that I can teach somebody work ethic or wanting to love their job or just going above and beyond. They do it because they love what they do. And you want to follow that path of you want to go to work and love what you do every day, because that is the goal for all of us. We all have to work. We all have things that are outside. We all need to get along. Well, why not love what you do as you're going to be there most of the time? Um, so just be honest with yourself.